Hello, my name is Pavel and welcome back to my channel. If you have not read the title, today I'm going to be watching movies that have been massive memes online that I've just missed and never seen. The reason I'm doing this video is, well, I don't know, it just seems like a lot of fun to watch movies and not really stress but also kind of like take the piss out of them because the three movies that I've picked that I've never seen before are The Room. Well. I'm gonna. I'm telling a little bit of a lie. I've seen a little bit of the room. I've seen like little clips. You know, like the things that everybody has seen. And I've also watched the Disaster Artist, which is kind of like um, a movie made about the room. So I know a little bit about it. The next movie is the B movie. I don't. Know, I think it's B movie. I don't know why I keep saying the B movie. But anyway, like I remember it being a huge thing. And like everybody used to send the entire script, quote it, stuff like that. Same with the room. I heard quotes from it entirely every single day in school. And the last movie that I've picked that has been a big thing online recently that seems awful that I'm not looking forward to watching is Morbius. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it now, I do not like superhero movies and I feel like this is gonna be like a bad superhero movie so it's gonna like, you know, make it even worse for me, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Those are the three movies. I do not want this intro to be super, super long so I'm gonna go watch the first movie right now and that is going to be B movie. So, bear back. <laughs> How should I start it? You like jazz? Hello, hello, hello. How do you think I have spent the warmest day of the year so far? Well, let me tell you, I've spent it by watching the B-movie and being quite bored and not enjoying it at all. Well, I've enjoyed a little bit of it, but I'll get to all of that in a second. Basically, if you do not know what the B-movie is, it is, as the title suggests, a movie about a bee pretending to be a human and that's one of the notes I wrote down on my phone is that there was like such a weird obsession in the early 2000s and I feel like there still is an obsession with animals speaking and acting like humans and that just being extremely entertaining and you know what I can't say anything I watched Shrek 2 about two or three weeks ago and I fucking enjoyed it but this movie I spent 90 minutes it's not even fully 90 minutes and I just I just didn't enjoy it. I found it to be really boring and then I had to sit back and reflect as to why I found it so boring. Why did I find Shrek 2 so entertaining but not this movie? This isn't about Shrek 2. This video is about movies that have been made into memes online and holy fuck, I remember the era of B-movie memes. People used to just send the entire script everywhere. Like I remember seeing it printed in the school. Like people would just like, physically print it out for no reason because it's funny and then like the quote, do you like jazz and all that sort of shit. It was such a weird obsession but then whenever you think about it, it does make sense because it's a bee named Barry who falls in love with a woman, like a real life human, and is just pretending, like, the concept is so crazy. But you know what, we're, we're just gonna accept the fact that the Barry is um, just, you know, just trying to be a human. But I, the, the thing I did enjoy about the B movie is that like at the start, they're really like hammering down on kind of like the routine elements of life as you graduate, you get a job for the rest of your life, you know, quote unquote, and you're depressed because you're just gonna work there and then you die, blah, 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 that like cycle. And I like how they kind of personify that through bees. That was kind of funny, but then that joke kind of died, that joke kind of died down fairly quick throughout the movie because like the further you go on, you kind of realize that they've just hit like this wall and they don't really know what to do with the movie. So you're just kind of watching it and you're like, oh my God, this is so fucking boring. Like there's just, it feels like, they wrote like half the script and they were like, you know what, let's just see what happens and they added random scenes in just just because it's a B and I understand that it's a kids movie, but it's not a great kids movie. Like, I love kids movies. As I said, I just watched Shrek 2. Fucking amazing, like so, so, so good. But this film, it's just boring. It's, you don't care about Barry and every time I see, every time I see Ken, who is the husband of the woman he's in love with, He's fucking Joe from Family Guy, so all I can see in my head is Family Guy, and it just ruins it for me. And another thing I remember that was quite heavily memed was the intro of this movie, because it's like a slow, like, uh, white font, black background, whatever, and it just says, I forget what it says, but I'll put it here on the screen now. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. And I remember that being uh, all over uh, like Twitter and shit like that as well. Remember that so well. But anyway, overall, I did not really enjoy this movie. And when I saw the list, I was like, you know what? I'm not excited for Morbius, and I know I've already mentioned it, or have I mentioned it? I don't know. Um, because I don't like superhero type movies. I know you're probably going to be at my neck, whatever, whatever. And The Room... 
I feel like that's just going to be like a struggle. But I was like, you know, I'm kind of half excited for the Bean movie. And I'm like, you know what, I feel like I'm just going to find Morbius and The Room more entertaining. Because like, The Room, it, it, it's The Room and Morbius is Morbius. Like, I, I have no idea what to expect. But that was just boring. I did not find that entertaining. It, it is what it is. It's the Bean movie. I believe it got like a 6.1 on IMDb. And I feel like if I was to give it a rating, I would also give it a 6. So, I mean... It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to stop talking shit. I'm basically going to stop talking shit about B-Movie. And I'm going to go watch something else. What, am I, what will I watch next? I'm going to go watch... I'll go watch The Room next. Because as I said, I'm not really looking forward to more base, So I'm going to leave that to last. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, that is my review of B-Movie. So time to go watch The Room. And I'm, I'm weirdly excited. I don't know why I'm excited. But because... Anyway, you know what? I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Be right back. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Hello, hello, hello. I just finished watching The Room and holy fuck. I had like 20 minutes to process this movie and I feel like I need a little bit more time. Also, if you hear me all stuffed, it's hay fever and it is fucking awful. But anyway, The Room. If you do not know what The Room is about, I'm going to tell you nothing. Just go watch it and then come back to this video because holy fuck, that was an experience. I watched The Disaster Artist, which is a movie based around like the making of The Room and I was like, there's no way like the movie's like that bad and holy fuck, yes it is, but like, you know the way it's like good, there's things that are just good, bad, this movie is just Tommy, who is Johnny, I believe that's the character's name, so Tommy is Johnny and Johnny is the most entertaining character in this movie, he's entertaining because of the script, how horrible it is, the way he like speaks and the way he like delivers lines is so rushed, I'll put some clips in throughout here of him speaking. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses please? Oh hi Johnny, I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go, keep the change. Hi doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye. And I remember years ago, I don't know how many years ago, maybe four, maybe five, uh, whenever this was a huge meme online, um, everybody would just have like random clips of him saying shit and even, even like his little laugh throughout this movie was like, ah ha ha ha, ah ha ha. It's fucking hilarious. But I feel like this movie would be best like watched in like a theater full of loads and loads and loads of people because like everyone is laughing. But whenever you're just watching it on the couch on YouTube because it's on YouTube for free if you if you actually want to watch it, it's not as fun because it's just painful. And like Tommy must have been so frustrated writing this movie because there's so many scenes where they're just riding or making out and like ever like I think there's nine or ten sack scenes throughout this video and I'm just watching it is so painful and they're all like cheesy early 2000, 2000s music videos thrown into a film so they have like roses and them like going really slow and like cameras like panning like this behind like curtains and just the music again and it's just oh, it's so fucking painful and every single time I see like a male and a female together and they get close and I'm like oh my god it's starting again and that's all this movie was like I feel like half an hour of the 90 minutes of this movie was just spent people riding and you're watching and it's so uncomfortable and you keep seeing Johnny's ass and it's really weird and I know in the disaster artist he was like uh, he thought having his ass in the scenes would like enhance viewing it just makes me feel disturbed and it, it didn't enhance like no no, 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 it's like every scene that Johnny's not in is painful to watch because all the other characters are just so plain and so boring and you do not care about them. So the storyline is really weak and the reason you're watching The Room is for Johnny. So when he's not in it and everybody else is talking and living their life and getting like, and bear in mind, he's by far the worst, worst actor in this movie and everyone else is like, you know, trying their best and they probably were like picked up from a newspaper or whatever. They were like, trying to do a good job it's just boring because like the script is just awful and you don't really know what's happening and the it's so dramatic when it doesn't need to be dramatic and i definitely have no no new unique thoughts about this film that like nobody's never said before but saying all that i still enjoyed it a lot more than the b movie because it's just so bad that you just have to be like i can't take this seriously so i'm going to continue watching it you are lying i never hit you you are tearing me apart, Lisa! I wrote so many notes down for this movie, so many. So I have all the iconic quotes, 
the awkward laugh, the ah ha ha. Every, like, I saw one of the comments, was like, if, if there was a drinking game for every single time you hear uh, Johnny laugh, you would be fucked in like the first five minutes. Just to touch on the writing again, it's really funny because, like, I, I know he, I said he was like frustrated writing this, but it's also really apparent that whenever, like, Tommy Wiseau, I think that's how you pronounce his second name, whenever he was writing this, he just wanted to boost his own ego as well because there's so many quotes and like lines where it's like Johnny is such a good person he cares about people he does this and like if there's like violence happening all all you see is Johnny running out and saving the day and he's such a great person and it's so funny because I would love to be like in his mind I'd like Tommy as a character is so mysterious not as a character as a person is so mysterious because from the disaster artist it, like what I found out was that he's like extremely rich nobody knows why he's really rich, nobody knows where he's from, nobody knows like what his deal is. So like being inside of his mind and understanding how he wrote the room and what was going through it, was he just like observing life and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a script based off people that I kind of like, observe every day and like maybe he was lonely and he wanted a girlfriend and he kind of like wrote a movie that was based around like his l love life kind of like falling apart and like what love is in his head like what happens in real life I do not know if that made any sense so like I would love to know more about him but he's such a mysterious man even now in 2022 like he's just about he's wearing the same clothes he's obviously a lot older and you know but it's also cute that like whenever this opened it did awful and now it's raised quite a lot of money for him like that's cute but also by the sounds of it he doesn't need any more money so I'm like I'm not too sure. I feel like I could speak about this movie for such a long time because I just have more questions than things to say about it. It just fascinates me. This movie really fascinates me and I don't know. Am I going to re-watch it? Probably not. Like, this is my first time fully watching it because I've watched clips from it and scenes but I've never sat down to watch it because I thought it would be very painful to watch in one setting and I was right. That was definitely very painful. Also, another note, the noises of people kissing and grunting and moaning in this are so disturbing. You could close your eyes and you could probably picture what is happening. Like, you could hear like people grunting and moaning, so you're like, okay, they're doing this. And then whenever like you hear, I, I don't know, the sound effects in this movie are just too much and they're just disgusting. And you do not need half of them or like t turn them down a little bit, just, Mm -mm. I'm flicking through my notes here and I, I genuinely think that's everything I have to say. I feel like, I, as I said, I could speak about this movie for such a long time but I'm going to shut up and I'm going to go watch Morbius maybe this evening or maybe tomorrow. I'm not too sure. I, I feel like that movie just really drained me. So I might take a break even though I'm not. Maybe it's just an excuse because I'm not looking forward to watching Morbius but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. M maybe it'll be laughably bad and more, I don't know, whatever. This isn't about Morbius. This is about the room so... That's all I have to say about it, I think. <laughs> Isolated. Breathe. And let it go. Hello, hello, hello. It has been a few days because hay fever, if you cannot hear, is kicking my ass. But you know what also makes me feel quite bad? Morbius because that movie was so fucking bad that I will never get an hour and 40 minutes back of my life because of this film. It was so boring, it had no depth, there was nothing exciting about it and I honestly, I got up like three times throughout this movie to just check how long was left because I just wanted this to end. And let me preface by saying, I do not like superhero movies usually. Like, the last superhero movie I went to see was the new Spider-Man, which was great because it obviously reminded me of my childhood and I quite like those movies. But everything else I'm just not really intrigued by and I know that's probably something that that's an opinion I should definitely keep to myself because I'll get in trouble or, you know, like, people will not be happy, but I just do not find them entertaining. I do not care about them that much. And I know this movie is not, like, a perfect rather It's not a perfect uh, representation of, like, superhero movies and stuff like that because it's just awful. But I feel like if this is the first one I've seen in such a long time, it's definitely going to taint my, my view on them even more. But anyway... If there are ones that you really want me to watch and you're watching this video, tell me in the comments and I might watch them. So, the first thing I want to speak about Morbius is what is the big meme around it? Why was it a big thing online? And basically, it was just 
it was just because it was so bad. People used to put up like random shit online saying it's like it's morbid time and blah blah blah, stuff like that. But Jared Leto, a person who seems very unlikable, ruined the meme because he they made like a video about it or something along those lines. What are you reading? Uh, nothing. Nothing really. Just uh, just reading about the and he just kind of killed it. So, as a person, like, as an actor, he is fairly good. Like, Requiem, Requiem, Requiem for a Dream, I do not know if I pronounced it correctly. He's fucking incredible in that film. Uh, it's just recently, he seems very annoying, because I believe he, like, did some weird stuff on set before. If I can find some articles, I'll put them on the screen, but I know he's done some weird stuff. And uh, I just, overall, as a person, I don't know him, but he just gives off gives off a vibe that he's very annoying. But the first thing I wrote down in my notes is that this movie uses like scientific and medical jargon just to kind of create an illusion of depth that is like not present in this movie. It's like you see we see Dr. Morbius in his lab and they're like talking about DNA and blood and bats and stuff like that and they're over complicating it with big words and like you know like in CSI like the crime show or whatever they like use like computers and it's like one they're just like typing random shit and like diagrams show up on the screen and it's like <laughs> Does that make any sense? Like, this is what this movie feels like. It's just overcomplicated because it is overcomplicated because there's nothing to go by. There's no, like, proper structure. The, the CGI in this movie is atrocious. Whenever he transforms or whatever you would say, um, it looks horrible. It doesn't look good. The faces of him and Matt Smith, awful. Sorry. My camera decided to run out of memory or my memory card or whatever. But basically, Matt Smith in this looks so weird because of like the CGI, it just looks horrible. Like, it feels like Matt Smith in this looks like, he looks like Elvis, but like a gone wrong Elvis that's like dead. Um, I don't know, it just looks horrible. And I also said in my notes that I feel like the CGI is just unnecessary. Like you do not need over the top CGI just to make the scenes and everything look that a little bit better or more like, I don't know, I just feel like as I've already mentioned, the, uh, uh, this movie is just missing substance. So they're just trying to compensate by anything they can. So they add like all these visual effects and like all these weird like, I feel like the movie's trying to just kind of like make you see scenes with over the top visual effects and you're like, whoa, Oh, that looks so good and they're attempting to just kind of like distract you from the actual movie so you're not thinking like oh this is really bad but it is just really bad like it's just not enjoyable it's oh, I don't it's just frustrating because I don't know it, it's just not good it's just not a good movie it almost looks as bad as cats you know the movie cats it looks almost as bad as that and I know I've had like a predetermined not predetermined like I've already had like a an opinion based on Jared Leto before I even started watching this movie and I know that's probably affected my opinion on it but I still feel like overall even not including that it's still bad it's just it's not mm. and the setup is so long like I know that's usually the structures like setup uh, conflict resolution like I know that's the setup for a lot of movies but the setup in this is so long and it's so long because it's so tedious and it's because of all of that like scientific jargon that I've mentioned and like the, the characters are just so boring and you get like a little bit of background story of Morbius when he was a kid and why he's doing this but it's like I don't know and there's so many cutaway shots because I feel like they're just trying to fill up space like there's this scene of Matt Smith just dancing like half naked and that's it nothing else and then there's like um, location shots before scenes and it's just there's no need for them because they're repeated over and over. Like, how many times are you going to show me a ship? I do not need to continuously see a ship to know that we are on a ship. I understand. The viewers are not stupid. We we, we know what we're watching. Ah, oh, I don't know. It was just... There's so many flaws with this. And I feel like if I watched it again, like, I feel like I didn't even give it my full attention. I feel like if I gave it even more attention, I would find even more flaws. But I'm not going to. Um, hopefully. Hopefully I'm never going to have to watch that again because I just don't want to. I enjoy watching a bad movie, 
but when it's a movie that's trying to be good but is actually bad and is just taking stuff way too seriously that's when it's not fun but when a movie is just like awful like low budget it's like fun to watch but when it's a movie that has such a big budget and like so much money has probably gone into this movie and it's just so terrible and the, every character is so serious and all the music is so serious and it's like all the lighting is super 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 dark and it's like this all oh, big er uh, serious movie and it's just fucking shit it's so bad <sighs> but I feel like I need to relax because I've just been giving out. That's all I have to say about Morbius. I've spoken about the B movie, I've spoken about The Room, and I've spoken about Morbius. What was the best one out of them all? I'm gonna say The Room because that was just such an entertaining watch. Then we have B movie, and then we have Morbius because that was a heap of shit. But I really enjoyed making this video, even though like the movies weren't great. It was still fun watching them fully for the first time. Like I've mentioned before, I've seen some of the B movie and I've seen some of the room, but like actually seeing it fully is just interesting and I've added more movies to my list. And it was it was quite a fun movie to make movie. It was quite a fun video to make. So thank you so much for watching this video and I really appreciate it if you would leave a comment, subscribe, like and all that sort of stuff. If you want to follow me on Instagram or get in touch or get in touch, it's at Pavel Spam and I always ask at the end of all of my videos, what movie? Should I watch next? Leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to go recover from hay fever, if that's if I can. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>